Plato, Concerning Metempsychosis Adapted from G.R.S. Mead's Thrice Greatest Hermes, Volume 1 And the soul's vice is ignorance, for that the soul who hath no knowledge of the things that are, or knowledge of their nature, or of good, is blinded by the body's passions, and tossed about. This wretched soul, not knowing what she is, becomes the slave of bodies of strange form in sorry plight, bearing the body as a load, not as the ruler, but the ruled. Corpus Hermeticum 10 For the better understanding of this passage, we may appropriately refresh our memories with the Platonic doctrine of the transmigration of souls, as given in the Phaedrus, 248 onwards, as a basis, but often departing from it for greater clearness. Part 1. The Soul and Her Mysteries, in Plato's Phaedrus. Quote, this is the life of the gods. Of the other souls, Whosoever followeth God best, and is being made most like unto him, keepeth the head of her charioteer lifted up into the space without the firmament. So she is carried round with the circuit thereof, yet being still troubled with the horses, and hardly beholding the things which are. So she is now lifted up, now sinketh down, and because of the compulsion of the horses, seeth some of the things which are, and some she seeth not. And the rest of the souls you must know, follow all, striving after that which is above, but unable to reach it, and so are carried round together, and sink below it, trampling upon one another, and running against one another, and pressing on to outstrip one another, with mighty great sound of tumult and sweat. And here, by reason of the unskillfulness of the charioteers, many souls are maimed, and many have many feathers of their wings broken, and all greatly travailing, depart without initiation in the sight of that which is, and departing, betake them to food of opinion. Now, this is why there is so great anxiety to see the space where is the plane of truth both because the pasture suited to the best part of the soul groweth in the meadow there, and the power of wing, whereby the soul is lightly carried up, is nourished by it, and that the law of Adrasteia is, that whatsoever soul, by following after God, hath seen somewhat of the true things, shall be without affliction till its next journey round. And if she can always do this, she shall be without hurt always. But when through incapacity to follow God she doth not see and overtaken by some evil chance, filled with forgetfulness and wickedness, she's weighed down, and being weighed down, she sheds the feathers of her wings and falls on to the earth. Then is the law not to plant her in her first birth in a beast's nature, but to implant the soul that hath seen most into the seed of one who shall become a wisdom lover, or a lover of the beautiful, or a man who truly loves the muses, the soul that hath seen the second best into the seed of one who shall become a king that loveth law, and is a warrior and a true ruler, the soul that hath seen third unto the seed of one who shall become busied in civic duties, or in some stewardship, or in affairs. The one that hath seen forth, into the seed of one who shall be a hardship-loving master of the body's discipline, or skilled in healing of the body. The soul that hath seen fifth, into that which shall have a life connected with the oracles or mystic rites in some way. Unto the sixth, a life poetic shall be joined, or that of some one or another tribe of copiers. Unto the seventh, the life of a workman or of a husbandman. 
unto the eighth that of a sophist or a demagogue, unto the ninth that of a tyrant. In all these lives, whoever lives them righteously obtains a better fate. He who lives unrighteously, a worse. Now to the self-same state from which each soul hath come, she cometh not again for some ten thousand years. For sooner than this period no soul regains its wings except the soul of him who has loved wisdom naturally or contrary to nature. Such souls in the third period of a thousand years, if they have chosen thrice this life successively, thus getting themselves wings, depart in the three thousandth year. But the other souls, when they have ended their first life, are brought to judgment, and being judged, some go to places of correction below the earth and pay the penalty while others are rewarded by being raised into a certain space in heaven where they live on in a condition appropriate unto the life they lived in a man's form. But in the thousandth year, both classes come to the lottery of lives, and each doth make a choice of its second life, whatever it may choose. And now it is that a soul that once had had a man's life doth pass into a brute's life, and from a brute he who was once a man passes again into a man. For that indeed the soul that never hath seen truth will never come into this configuration. For we must understand man in the sense of form, as one proceeding from many sensations and collected into a unit by means of ratiocination. But this is recollection, anamnesis of those things, which our soul once did see when she journeyed with God and looked beyond the things we now call things that are, by raising her face to that which really is. Wherefore of right, Alone the understanding of the wisdom lover hath got wings. For he is ever engaged upon those things in memory as far as he can be, on being engaged at which, as being a god, he is divine. The man then who doth make a right use of memories such as these, ever being made perfect in perfect perfectionings, alone becometh really perfect. But inasmuch as he eschews the things that men strive after, and is engaged in the divine alone, he is admonished by the many as though he were beside himself, for they cannot perceive he is inspired by God. Thus said Plato in the Phaedrus. Part 2. Plotinus on Metempsychosis Let us now turn to the genuine disciples of the Master for further light on this tenet. And first of all, to Plotinus. The most sympathetic notice of this tenet in Plotinus is to be found in Gilles Simon's Histoire de l'École d'Alexandrie, Paris, 1845 based for the most part on Plotinus' Aeneids and on Ficino's commentary. After citing some ironical passages from Plotinus, in which the philosopher disguised the real doctrine which in his day still pertained to the teachings of higher initiation, Gilles Simon goes on to say, Even though admitting that this doctrine of metempsychosis is taken literally by Plotinus, we should still have to ask for him, as for Plato, whether the human soul really inhabits the body of an animal, and whether it is not reborn only into a human body which reflects the nature of a certain animal by the character of its passions. The commentators of the Alexandrian school sometimes interpreted Plato in this sense. Thus, according to Proclus, Plato in the Phaedrus condemns the wicked to live as brutes and not to become them. Katienae es bion therion, kai uk es soma therion. 
Chalcidius gives the same interpretation, for he distinguishes between the doctrines of Plato and those of Pythagoras and Empedocles, qui non naturam modo feram, sed etiam formas. Hermes declares in unmistakable terms that a human soul can never return to the body of an animal, and that the will of the gods forever preserves it from such disgrace. Part 3. Proclus on the Descent of Souls into Irrational Natures Again, Proclus, in his commentaries on the Timaeus, writes very definitely with reference to the following passage of Plato. And if he still in these conditions did not cease from vice, he would keep on changing into some brutish nature, according as he acted in a way resembling the expression in Genesis of such a mode of vicious living. For he says, with reference to this descent of souls into irrational animals, it is usual for men to inquire how it is meant. And some think that what are called brute-like lives are certain resemblances of men to brutes, for that it is not possible for the rational essence to become the soul of a brute. Others allow that even this human soul may be immediately degraded to reasonless creatures, for that all souls are of one and the same species, so that they may become wolves and panthers and ichneumons. But the true reason, Logos, asserts that Though the human soul may be degraded to brutes, it is only to brutes which possess the life suited to such a purpose, while the degraded soul is, as it were, vehicled on this life and bound to it sympathetically. And this has been demonstrated by us at great length in our lecture on the Phaedrus, and that this is the only way in which such degradation can take place, if, however, it is necessary to remind you that this meaning, Logos, is that of Plato, it must be added that in the Republic he says that the soul of Therisites assumed an ape life, but not an ape's body, and in the Phaedrus that the soul descends into a brutish life, and not a brutish body, for the mode of life goes with its appropriate soul. And in the passage from the Timaeus, he says that it changes into a brute-like nature, for the brutish nature is not the body, but the life principle of the brute. End of Plato Concerning Metempsychosis Adapted from G.R.S. Meads, Thrice Greatest Hermes, Volume 1 Read by Dan Attrell if you would like to support more work such as this, please visit patreon.com slash themodernhermeticist. And above all, thank you for listening.